The evolution of communal living prior to the 1950s to a culture of increased privacy following the war is a fascinating aspect of American society, with its roots embedded in socioeconomic, technological, and ideological changes. Prior to the post-war wealth boom of the 1950s, individuals in the United States often lived in more communal environments, where families shared spaces and possessions out of necessity, and neighbors engaged with one another as part of everyday life. The idea of extreme privacy, as we know it today, was far less prevalent in these earlier times. For the men entering the military during World War II, moving into the communal barracks would not have been as unfamiliar or jarring as it would be today. The daily life of servicemen in these barracks was marked by shared quarters and facilities, lack of personal space, and a sense of unity born out of shared experiences and challenges. This common experience fostered a sense of camaraderie and brotherhood that transcended backgrounds and personal differences, building bonds that would last a lifetime. However, the post-war economic boom in the brought a significant shift in societal values and expectations. Prosperity led to a stronger emphasis on personal space and privacy. Suburban homes replaced densely populated urban dwellings, each equipped with enough rooms to provide each child their own space. Transportation shifted from public transit to individual cars, further emphasizing the individual's autonomy and personal space. These changes were not just physical or economic, but ideological as well. The concept of privacy began to transform, gradually evolving into the extreme forms we observe in today's society. A vivid example of this shift can be seen in the communal spaces used for bathing and swimming. During the 1940s and earlier, it was not uncommon for men to swim nude together in communal spaces, such as the YMCA. This practice was born out of a culture that was less sensitive about individual privacy and more accepting of shared spaces for men. However, in today's society, the same practice might be seen as shocking or inappropriate, reflecting the modern emphasis on personal privacy. While this heightened sense of privacy has developed in tandem with certain personal freedoms, it has also had significant impacts on social interactions and relationships. As American society has become more private, spaces for communal interaction have diminished. This has resulted in a more atomized society, where people are less likely to form the kind of close-knit relationships that were a hallmark of earlier communal living. Military barracks and the example of men's spaces for swimming, sports, and leisure in the 1940s serve as good examples of the bond-building power of shared experiences and communal spaces. While the shift towards privacy has had many positive impacts, it is important to reflect on what has been lost in this transition. The intense camaraderie experienced by servicemen in barracks and those making use of men's support organization facilities is rarely replicated in our modern, privacy-oriented society. Communal settings of the past such as these also played an influential role in shaping men's acceptance of their bodies. With exposure to the diversity of the human form, men developed an understanding and acceptance of the various body types. This promoted a sense of body positivity, contrasting sharply with today's culture where men's self-perception and expectations are heavily influenced by narrow media portrayals of masculinity and physical attractiveness. The shift towards privacy and individualism has reduced opportunities for men to see other men in non-sexual contexts, leading to unrealistic body expectations, self-esteem issues, and overall body discomfort. The increasing fragmentation of society due to this privacy trend has sparked a debate today about its potential downsides. The emphasis on privacy can lead to a sense of isolation, and the lack of communal spaces can reduce opportunities for spontaneous social interactions, resulting in less robust social networks. While privacy is certainly important, it is crucial to also understand the value of shared experiences and community connections. As we navigate an increasingly private and digital society, we should seek to strike a balance that respects individual privacy while also promoting communal bonds and shared experiences. By doing so, we can build a society that offers certain individual freedoms and yet fosters a sense of community and camaraderie. As the examples given show us, it is often in the shared experiences of hardship and celebration that the most enduring and profound human connections are made.
Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this. Thank <laughs> you.